Hi guys, how are you? So nice to connect to you and welcome to this video. My name is Laura from Pleiadian Healer at PleiadianHealer.com. Today I want to talk about something that's been coming up a little bit. So I was recently asked by this person who he, she just asked me, okay, so what's the AI that you see in and around people just in general, also during your sessions. And I was like, you know, this is a perfect topic for a video because I'm pretty sure this would be concerning other people too, or at least you'd be curious about it. So the topic is going to be what are astral entities and how do they tie into AI or into the AI that's basically all over the astral. Okay, so just to kind of get back to that person's question, there are a lot of different types of AI or astral entities that I see in people, especially during sessions, but also just in general, you know, like when you just hear news on this story, like the crazy news of people butchering another person or just, you know, just all the bad news that they kind of throw at you. I'm like, yeah, that is 100% the entity possession that I already discussed in other videos or just like the negative thoughts that are taking over other people's minds, which in my opinion, it is a form of entity possession. It's also a form of psychic attack. So astral and AI for me go hand in hand because almost all entities in the astral can be considered to be a form of AI. And for me, a lot of this AI is actually run by something or someone. I don't want to say necessarily the government because that's really general, but definitely by these matrix controllers, by the elites, oftentimes by military too. So they all tie into one and the same thing because they all kind of follow this pattern and they all kind of are controlled by something or someone. There's definitely a pattern, no matter what country in the world you're in, there's just something that always ties into it, right? Like countries in and of itself actually don't really exist in that sense. It's just more parts of the world that are controlled by these different factions or call it whatever you want to call it. And some of them might be at war of each, with each other. Some of them are just pretending they are. But at the end of the day, it kind of all ties into the overall question, who's really running this place? <laughs> and that could be a whole nother video in and of itself. So just to keep this video and this matter a bit simple, um, what are astral entities? Okay, so um, for me, it also doesn't necessarily matter if people kind of agree or disagree with it, because I've just seen too much at this point where I'm like, when people talk about these fancy ETs, these fancy aliens, all of that, which I already discussed in my other video, you know, how to not give much power to like calling in the angels, the archangels, your spirit guides, your alien guides. And if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely watch it. It's all the same thing. Most of it, whatever you see, in my opinion, it's grays, could be zetas, whatever. I just call them grays. Um, and these grays are really good at just looking different, you know, so they might disguise themselves as a Pleiadian guide or whatever they call it. They might disguise themselves as an Arcturian guide or the White Wing Collective of Nine <laughs> or whatever people even channel these days. So this is the AI that's in the astral. This, these are the astral entities. And in that sense, almost all entities in the astral can be considered AI because they're basically soulless in that sense, right? There's no soul to it. And sometimes that's this case for ghosts as well. So ghosts are just like spirits that are kind of left over. Some of these are literally just imprints of people that have long since reincarnated over and over again. And in other cases, the, these are literally deceased loved ones who just haven't passed over yet. So that's also a different story in and of itself. There are different astral entities. There's different AI that I usually see. When I do my sessions, you want to start with a simple thing. Um, you have AI or entities clinging to people. So those are the ones you want to get off because those are really the ones that could either drain your energy kind of like the energy sucking vampires or just kind of clinging onto your energy and then you're really drained. Um, those could also be the ones that whisper certain things in your ear for you to do certain things. 
But that's really just for people who are very unconscious and who really don't know what's going on in their life, you know, similar to the ones who just go out to the bars and drink and are in their matrix and all of that. So there's just a lot that goes into it, but everyone could have like this form of entity attachment onto them, call it entity attachment for the lack of a better word in this case. And those would be an astral entity or an AI entity attached to these people. So I usually see them when you go to the astral, because in these sessions, you obviously have to do that. Um, they're literally just kind of right over a person usually, or even like in the back. Um, they're not directly on your body, but more like your energy body. So I would say they're more in your auric field, your energy field than anything. But some of it could also be very much embedded in your body. So when I see that, it's usually in the heart. It's also in a few other things. You talk about energetic parasites, which are usually like in that sacral womb area. Um, that would be like the abdominal area. It could also be like around the solar plexus, depends on the person. So you see that, and that's like, literally looks almost like real parasites, just energetic parasites, like kind of like chip-like things, you know, black matter or whatever. It comes through differently in different sessions. That's a form of AI or astral entity. Uh, those are the very small ones, but basically the ones that kind of cling in your auric field, those are the ones that probably drain the most of your energy, I would say. Um, and then you also have the ones that kind of full-on attack people. So when we're talking about psychic attacks and where they come from and, you know, why people just feel violated in their energy field, the entities that kind of come out of nowhere and literally just attack, those would be the ones, like, once again, could be grace, could be entities just disguised as something else. Uh, those would be another form of AI, another form of astral entity. Those would not necessarily be the one you would want to have removed in the session because obviously they're always in and out, but the ones that are clinging to you are the ones you want to have removed. Now, what you can do against these attacks is you can build up these strong protective shields, which I also discuss in my psychic protection course and other courses too. So you can do a lot of things to diminish these attacks, but at the end of the day, it's a regular process. It's not just something that you do one time or two times, but it's just like, a regular process that you have to do once a day or sometimes even a few times a day it depends on your situation. So then you have the AI implants or chips. It can also be intrusions for some. And I do teach how to remove those in the course Be Your Own Shaman. But basically, these could be implanted by these other AI beings or astral entities. They can also come from other electronics though. So electronics meaning when you hold your cell phone, when you hold your tablet, when you're in front of a desktop or screen all the time, that can really form some form of chip in your hands, depending on what's your dominant hand. Um, also what I've seen a lot, and this was more a few years ago, is basically like these brain chips in people's temples. I wanna say it's temples is right here next to the eyes. So there's just a lot what they try to throw at you. And it's really just, if you just think about it, it's just mind blowing, like everything that they come up with just to kind of really control people, distract people, get them out of their zone. Um, what I've been seeing lately a lot, and I always say this year up until, well, yeah, over the past few months for sure, I've seen a lot of these AI implants in people's spines lately, which is interesting. Because for me, the spine kind of stands for, you know, you need a spine to stand up, also to stand up for yourself and others. So when they're putting some implants in there, it's almost like they want to get rid of these people's spines or control these people's spines. Meaning, is there a, an English saying? I know in Germany, there's a saying that it was someone who doesn't have a spine and that kind of translates into someone who's a pushover. So it could be a similar saying in the English language. But basically, I kind of find... All of that could be part of a plan, you know, putting these uh, implants in people's spines for them to be just more complacent with the agenda and everything. Um, another thing that is very common, and I've been seeing those for the past three or four years or so, are AI grids around people. So it's literally like a matrix grid, for the lack of a better word. So if you've seen the movie, The Matrix, where the grid is like these green dots all over, you know, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. Um, that would literally be 
around people's auric fields and I would have to remove those. And I'm like, wow, they were like all gritted in by this AI. For other people, what I would see is fog. So especially when there's a lot of brain fog or just confusion in people's lives or you have it with EMF radiation too. If people have been polluted by EMF and EMF radiation, there could be something like a fog around it. Unfortunately, also pharmaceutical drugs kind of can cause that. It really just depends on the person. It's going to be different from person to person. But I kind of see the fog and the grid. Uh, with some people, they have both as well. But I kind of see that just as a sign that they're really just trying to make your entire energy field foggier and more controlled and all of that too. And then I wanted to briefly talk about the astral projecting that I know there's at least one channel that's been hyping this one for like the past 10 years or so here on YouTube. But yeah, with the astral projecting, so when you project, meaning you literally leave your body to do that, um, it's very common for entities to maybe enter. And in this case, you would even have something like a walk-in energy, like it would maybe be hard for you to get back into your body in that sense. Or it's just all kinds of juju things that they want to pull off, you know, like all of a sudden you have an entity that's in your body together with you and you don't necessarily want that. And then you do certain things that are not very, like you wouldn't usually do those, but all of a sudden it just happens. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into that topic in and of itself. So I do not promote astral projection at all. I actually really don't like it. I kind of speak against, uh, I've been speaking against this, I think since 2020 and on because that one person who really promotes it, like, I know he made his business and everything about that too. I'm just like, this is crazy. This is also a person who really talks about spirit misguides and everything. So it all kind of makes sense because it all ties into the same thing. And I, once again, I just feel there's something so precious about us actually inhabiting our body and us being in this body and everything that they're promoting is essentially to get us out of our bodies, right? The channeling, the astral projection, projecting, or even astral traveling, like every single thing is supposed to get you out of your body, whereas it's just so important to be present with your body and to be present with anything that's coming up. You know, if you have like a pain in your foot, why is it that you have that pain in your foot? Like all these discomforts, diseases, and illnesses, they really speak to us because it's a form of the soul language, our soul communicating to us through the body. Of course, they can also come because of psychic attacks. But mostly there's always a hidden message behind all of this, in my opinion. And I've been really dealing with this since 2014 on. So I have seen a certain pattern with it. And you just can't ignore it. Let's put it that way, especially when someone's going through something very severe and major. So in short, I think that's basically what I can summarize as uh what's the AI you deal with or what are the astral entities? What are they really doing? Of course, there are many more things that go into it, but I think this gives you a short overview of it. So I would say, um, I mean, there's a lot of other things too. You know, you can just have random like arrows or anchors or helmets around you. It really depends on the situation. And I feel all of those just kind of come from these random entities as well. So what I oftentimes see over and over again is really people being stuck in this lab-like setting and then these random Zetas or Greys or other entities just really messing with them, you know, doing these psychic surgeries, energetic implants, whatever they're doing, or even just trying to get to all of their soul pieces. It really depends on the circumstance. But when they put something in you, like some arrow or some some helmet around your head or whatever, that's usually just coming from them directly. So it's all just an extension of what they're trying to do. And this is all energetically in the astral, like I said, you know, but you could feel that it could have an impact on your physical body and your physical life because you might feel, oh, there's something around my head or there's something like, like something stuck in my heart. I need to get that out somehow. So that's really how they try to get to people, too. Um, and then people who kind of just promote these alien abductions, I think there's a higher agenda behind that as well, because I have not to this point, I have not seen a single abduction that was positive. Let's put it that way. So alien meaning, you know, just like the AI, because that's basically what it, alien is, is an AI concept. There's no soul alien out there. And in my opinion, all of these militarized AI beings, they're all government run anyhow. 
which government, whose government exactly, that's the big question of the day. But obviously the U.S. military plays a huge role in it. And there are other people talking about those things. So you should probably go watch their insight on it if possible, because there's a lot of disclosure on that specific aspect too. All right, you guys, I hope this helps. Thank you so much for tuning in and comment your thoughts below. If you have any thoughts, talk to you very soon. Bye.